<laughs> Great question. Well, I think it's probably an ethical dilemma. In other words, I fear the biggest issue is that we are enjoying a very high quality of life at the expense of others, other people in other countries or generations to come. And so the biggest challenge is one of shifting social norms so that they're better aligned with that ethical dilemma that I think if most people knew what impact they were having on others, they probably wouldn't feel very comfortable. And I think they would be willing to uh, change some things. And so I think it's sort of a, that's the biggest challenge. And I think, you know, sort of the goals I think are twofold is one to inform people and let them know what we think is happening. And we have a pretty good idea about that. And then opening the debate about what is the best way to go about, for example, for developed countries and reducing their impact so that, for example, developed or under less developed countries could then have their share of human development, for example. So very briefly, I think on a professional level, I've reoriented almost all of my research and questioning towards these types of questions. So it's now occupies, I'd say, 90% of my teaching and my research, thinking about these questions with regard to biodiversity in particular, since that's my background. But on a personal level, also, you know, I've made a lot of decisions, for example, not to do any field work outside of Switzerland or not to go to conferences outside of Europe or to, you know, not take the plane when we go on holidays. So there's been trying, there's been, for my personal case, an alignment in both the personal and the professional, I'd say over the last five years to, you know, just feel comfortable so I can sleep at night to make a long story short. Well, um, I read some interesting things, some interesting articles about how to persuade people about the importance of climate change. And I think the research suggests the best thing to do is to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it in an open way, in a non-condescending way, in a non-dogmatic uh, uh, way. And I think that comp or workshops like this are part of what needs to be happening at every possible level where we exchange, we talk, we revisit ideas. We, it's, it's a safe space to think of options. And in a way, we're just planting many, many seeds, some of which will sprout and some of which will help us bring about the change that we think is necessary. Okay, so regarding uh, the key issues on the eco ecological transition, I will focus mostly on uh, the issues of uh, energy consumption and climate change because questions like um, pollution or biodiversity and so on are not of my field. So of course, climate change is mainly in relation, uh, is mainly due to the anthropogenic uh, use of energy. And the main issues in this regard are, on the one hand, uh, energy efficiency or energy sufficiency also, which is the reduction of our energy demand by efficient processes. And the other one is the integration of renewable energies so as to um, fight uh, uh, CO2 emissions and, and climate change. And both these issues have to uh, be tackled together. Okay, and so one of the of the main issues, I think, is to actually um, be able to to we have a lot of technologies uh, which are available already, and uh, and uh, the whole question is, is about how to have these uh, technologies being used uh, correctly, being uh, uh, appropriated by by people, by craftsmen, by users. And, and one of the major issues actually is not, it's not so much about new technological developments. Of course, they are also important, but it's mainly about how to integrate uh, existing uh, new technologies in the existing system uh, in an efficient way. And this concerns as well, uh, uh, dimensioning, uh, uh, integration in terms of control strategies, uh, um, 
continuous formation of, of craftsmen and so on. These are the main issues in my, in my opinion. Well, there are many of them, uh, but the main issue that they're all interlinked and we need to find how to navigate through these linkages and how, what are the trade-offs between these um, societal and ecological challenges. So today we were trying to address one by one these challenges and in the future we should really try systemically to address both societal and environmental challenges. So my field is uh, urban metabolism, which is the systemic understanding of all of the flows and stocks from cities. Uh, and by systemic, I mean, try to really see the, the, the city as a system and understand what, what are the complex uh, behavior of a city in terms of its resource use, uh, waste, pollution, uh, waste emission uh, and pollution flows. And in that sense, we don't only look at the very end of the pipeline, how much we produce emissions, but we also look what, what caused it. And so we really try to, to find the roots of the problems to address them at the very beginning, instead of just you know, putting uh, something shiny at the end. Once again, I think this, this issue, this societal uh, and urgent issue that we're facing, is, does not belong in only one discipline. We, we really have to, to bring forces from many different disciplines. And the force of such uh, workshops is to, to bring people from academia, people from, the, uh, from practice, people from policy as well that have different views in order to, to have this compass, this new compass of how to navigate through these problems. Because this is new to, to many of us. And then finding solutions is also something that we're not all very good at. So all together, we might just become a bit better. Amazing. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>